While it's true that we each pick our own path through life, our personalities and individual identities are determined by factors over which we have no control. As a social activist focusing on the LGBTIQ community, lawyer Kevil Harry has drawn on his own experiences to become an effective voice against prejudice, while also finding fulfillment as a runner, baker, and proud South African of Indian origin. I met up with Kevil recently to find out more about his journey. An attorney by training and an activist by conviction, Kevil Hari is the director of Gala, an NGO focused on the history, culture and contemporary experience of LGBTIQ people in South Africa. I met Kevil Hari a few weeks ago at a wedding and we ended up dancing the night away. It wasn't until a brief stalk on Facebook that I discovered there's a lot more to him than his killer dance moves and I'm so honoured to be sharing his story with all of you. Kevil, okay, well, so good to see you again. Mwah. Welcome to Gala. I'm so happy to have you here. Kevil, okay, well, where does your story begin? I'm a Joburg boy. Grew up in Azadville, of all places. And I lived in Cape Town for about 10 years. But Joburg boy through and through. I'm very proud to be one. What inspired you to study law? I've always been a social justice activist. And I've been mean, growing up during the kind of democratic dispensation of South Africa. I think it really inspired me and that was always one of the reasons why I wanted to do study law. How did you go from law to being the director of GALA? A few years back I was working at the University of Cape Town during what was a very difficult time of Rose Must Fall and Fees Must Fall and it came for me as a kind of personal calling of I needed to do more and I knew that the way I could do more was really by being a part of GALA and spreading kind of visibility for LGBTIQ people and also being a part of the archive. What is GALA and how did it come about? The GALA archives, the Gay and Lesbian in Memory in Action, was started about 23 years ago. And it started out with the objective of really speaking against the narrative of homosexuality being un-African, because in the collection itself we house the histories, lived experiences and narratives of LGBTIQ people in South Africa and Southern Africa. So it's a remarkable collection and I think by speaking about visibility or showing that our history, we can kind of ensure that there is a sense of queer African pride. Kevil, what is the aim of GALA? The aim of the organization is threefold. One, it's to be a kind of center or house for LGBTIQ history, but part of that is also about education. So how do we use the archive and this incredible trove of historical material to kind of educate people around, one, the rights of LGBTIQ people, but to also provide a space for LGBTIQ youth in the way of knowing about their own history and also knowing about the rights that exist. People can come through, they can either access the books, they can access the research material, we host workshops here, and that I think is a very important part of the work we do about really creating a house particularly for LGBTIQ people, many of whom might not necessarily have their homes because they've been kicked out for being who they are. Let me take you through to the Gala Library, which houses an amazing collection of queer literature. Awesome. Oh, okay, well, I love books. Yeah, isn't this an amazing space? Almost all of the books that are here have been donated by the community. Gala also publishes their own books. We do. Part of the work that we do in terms of educating and also spreading awareness is about publishing our own works. Part of it relates to historical works. Let me show you one of the stories of Simon and Corley, who was a liberation activist who also fought for the rights of LGBTIQ people. Simon and Corley was imprisoned during the Dalmas trial, and the book till the time of the trial speaks of the love letters that he had written to his partner, Roy Shepard, whilst in prison. And a lot of it speaks about Simon's own activism and why it was important to situate the rights of LGBTIQ people in the struggle for liberation. Besides work, what else are you passionate about? I love reading, but one of the things that I really, really love doing, particularly as a way of unwinding, is to bake. I know that you like baking too, so maybe we should bake something together. That is the best idea in the world. Cool. True to his Josie roots, Kevil has made a cozy home with his husband in an inner city apartment to which Zaki was invited. Panoramic windows provide plenty of light for him to read by and warmth to keep a cat comfortable. Kevil, I love your art for change. Thank you. So the kitchen is my happy place and I really like to be comfortable when I'm baking. This all looks magnificent. What I'm going to be baking today is a fig and almond tart, which is a Palestinian-inspired recipe. I've made it a few times before, and every time I've made it, it's a winner. Okay, well, before we get started, when did you know you were gay? I think the process for me was something that I denied for a very, very long time, particularly out of fear of coming out. And so it 
kind of in a sense I bloomed a lot later than a lot of people know like I know a lot of people say that they knew from the time they were very young that wasn't the case for me I think I kind of suppressed it quite a lot but I knew as I was going older and particularly during my teens and later years at university it just felt like something wasn't right. Was there a journey to self-acceptance? It was definitely a journey and quite a difficult journey at the beginning also because I was quite afraid of what my family would say I think my family when I when I eventually came out to them were quite concerned about what society would say and I think that play, still plays quite a huge role for a lot of people. Thank you for allowing me to share my journey with you but let's get baking. The star of the dish, the figs, and I'm gonna get you to help me to cut those in half. Of course. Oh, check at that, beautiful. And I'm going to start with the filling. I'm gonna first add in the sugar, and then I'm gonna add in the butter. Next, I'm going to add in the eggs, and then the saffron, and then just give it a bit of a whisk. That's a lot of butter. Makes everything good. <laughs> So now we need to add in the almond flour. There we go. Some of the lemon juice. And then we're gonna give it a bit of a mix again. So now we're gonna take the figs and put them in here and just drizzle some honey over them. Sure. How gorgeous are these figs? I just love the kind of earthy texture that they have. So these are ready for the oven. I'm just gonna pop this in. Do you think the Indian community is more or less tolerant? I don't necessarily think the Indian community is more conservative. I think that society in general in South Africa is very conservative, but I think that we can definitely do a lot better in terms of supporting people in just being who they are and also speaking out against violence. So while the figs are in the oven, I'm just going to grab the pie crust. Ta-da! Look at this perfectly golden. You're a genius in the kitchen. So I just have two more ingredients to add to our filling. One is the orange essence. I'm going to just give it a good shake, just one. And then just a little pinch of salt. And we mix. Because we're going to find the whiz. And now we're going to take the filling and put it into the pie. Just have to kind of spread it around to make sure that it's all even. That filling looks so luxurious. I know, right? It just looks really rich and creamy and thick. So I'm just going to grab the figs from the oven. You can take that for me. The star of the show. Gosh, look at this. <gasps> How amazing that looks. This is the really fun part because now we get to like decorate it in a way that makes it look presentable. So the idea behind this is I'm going to start on the outside and kind of place them in a way that almost looks like a lotus flower. Et voila! Why do you love baking and who taught you how to bake? When I think of home, I always think of the kitchen and that's because my mom and my grandmother are both amazing cooks and they really inspired me to kind of experiment in the kitchen and that's where I get my inspiration from. This is ready for the oven so I'm just going to pop this in. Let me open it for you. Oh, that is hot! Speaking of hot, I see that my husband's here so let's go and have a chat to him. He's home. Hello, how are you? Ah. Mm, good to see you as well. Hi. Good to see you. <laughs> I have to ask, how did you two meet? We actually met at a friend's lunch in Cape Town. Neither one of us have ever met each other before. And funny enough, me being American and Kevil from Joburg, we were both the only people to arrive on time. <laughs> so we uh, started chatting and hit it off quite well. And you know, a week later, we went on our first date, and the rest is history. And what attracted you to Kevil in the first place? First and foremost was that we didn't eat meat, so that was a really good conversation starter. At the end of the day, we both really had a good time together exploring, doing new things, going hiking in Cape Town. And, you know, we really love to travel together, and we, we've got that sense of adventure in common. So, you know, we've been to so many places together. A lot of it's the States, so going to visit my family. Andrew, what was it like marrying into an Indian family? It was definitely a culture shock, but a really great one. And I'm really lucky to have amazingly supportive and fantastic in-laws, both immediate family in-laws and the entire family that comes with it. They've always been supportive of both Kevil and myself being together, and they made for a fantastic wedding. The setting may be South Africa, but the Lord Ganesha is still honored as the remover of obstacles. And the wedding was a celebratory fusion of colorful Desi tradition and dapper Western style. How did you incorporate Bollywood into your wedding? I think for the longest time I knew that when I got married I wanted to have a big, fat Indian wedding. 
and I'm obsessed with Bollywood. So it was really about how do we do it in a way that is kind of showing people our culture as well, because a lot of people that were coming, particularly Andy's family, this would be kind of new experience for them. And so it was really, we thought that Bollywood was the kind of good connection because everyone knows Bollywood and it's a really fun way of getting people involved. It was really great to actually bring in a lot of my friends from the States and my family into the dances and kind of make it a true cross-continental Bollywood wedding. So I think our tart might be ready. Shall we get going to the kitchen? Yeah. Great. I've also got to get back to work, but uh, definitely save me a piece of tart. There we go. <gasps> that is superb. Zach, let's see how this turned out. That is perfection. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Amidst many intolerances, Kevil has managed to carve out a space of safety and love, not only for himself, but for so many other people. His courage and passion is inspiring, and I hope you can take a leaf out of his book. <laughs>